Hi, I'm Shira Karpow. And I'm Shana Gaunt, and we're board certified behavior analysts. At How To ABA, we provide practical resources, community, and support to ABA professionals. In each episode of our podcast, we will be having real conversations with real people sharing real stories about ABA. We'll share relevant strategies and actionable tips that will make us all better ABA practitioners. It's the ABA content you need that you're not going to learn in a textbook. Hi, everyone. Today, we are talking with Leanne Page, who is a BCBA and the founder of Parenting with ABA. Now, I have to say, Leanne, I don't know if I told you this, but we've um, heard of you. I think Shana sent me one of your articles. Must be like six or seven years ago that you wrote for a blog post. I still remember the name of it. It was Baby's First Sticker Chart. And Leanne, I have to say, I still send that to so many parents. Like, I love that. Yeah. Um, And and. It's, it's amazing. We use it. And then like fast forward a couple of years later, you know, we started to connect and interact through this world of like, you know, online websites and social media. And it's just so exciting to say that, you know, we've developed somewhat of a friendship. So welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. So if you could start by telling us a little bit about like what you're doing, your background and how you got here. Okay, (laughs) so I actually started as a special ed teacher many, many moons ago um, and had a behavior analyst come in and support my classroom and decided I wanted to become her. So I did, Um, had no idea what ABA was before that, even though I had a graduate degree in special ed, I'd never heard of it um, as a job, as a a whole field. Uh, So I became a BCBA. I used to work managing a center, working clinically. Um, We moved overseas for a few years, so I didn't really work in ABA (laughs) over there. And when we came back to Texas, um, I was a stay-at-home mom and that was by choice, but my brain was kind of turning to mush. I felt like, and I joined mommy groups and these wonderful moms that I looked up to and were mentors to me would talk about punishing their kids and all of these things, like these kids are, you know, behaving terribly. So I took all their toys away and things like this, that was a little bit shocking to me with my behavior background. So that is where parenting with ABA came from. I had already had a website and a blog before then, and it all shifted to being, okay, we need to teach moms about this whole science of behavior because who needs it the most? Uh, Moms. So that's kind of how it all ended up. And then from blogging, I wrote a book and it's kind of grown from there. Wow. I mean, that's so interesting. I similar path to myself kind of coming into the field through education, but even before I got into education, I was a mom before I was a teacher and before I was a behavior analyst. And I remember, I didn't even know what ABA was, but I was like, as a parent, like, I wish I knew what to do and there must be answers. And I found it so intriguing that, you know, people knew certain ways about how, you know, how do you know when to punish? How do you know when to reward your child? How do you know how to toilet train? How do you know all these things? And I didn't even know that all the answers were out there. So there is such a need amongst moms, parents, anyone who's, you know, working with kids to have these tools at their fingertips. So I think it is like such an amazing thing um, to spread the word to them. Thank you. There's so much noise in the online mommy world that, you know, those of us are like, there's a science of behavior. It is backed by research. You know, we're just shouting over some of the noise saying, please read this. Oh my God, that's it. Like everyone's a parenting expert. Everyone's and, got an opinion. And, and everyone, everyone has an opinion. And, you know, this works for you and this works for them and try this and try that. And yeah, as a parent, that is so overwhelming. But if you only knew, if you only knew that that we were right, now that we have all the answers, <laughs> there is a science out there. Um, and, and if people knew about it, I think that it would really change lives. Yeah, and it does. And it does. And I'm so lucky that I get to do that. And I get to see the lives that are changing in these moms that, you know, come so far, so fast when they just learn a little bit about behavior. So great. But it's also their behaviors being reinforced because you give them a few little tips that work and they're going, wow, that's all I have to do. And this is what I get. Wow. Yes. That these really small changes in your parenting can have huge, huge effects. Um, Yeah. We tell them I need, I need them to listen and learn. (laughs) So, you know, I came about ABA a little bit differently than you guys. I was in ABA for a long time before I had a kid. And I still shudder when I used to do parent training because I do parent coaching, parent training, parent support, whatever you want to call it. And I would go in as a, I don't know, 20 something year old with no kids. And I'd say, oh, well, just do this and this and this, your morning routine. 
all you need to do is this. And I, I didn't recognize how hellish mornings and, and there's no real other word for it. Mornings can be hell for parents, um, especially if you've got more than one kid, if you've got younger kids, if you've got three kids under the age of five, like routines are difficult. And as a, you know, a young BCBA walking in, I had no idea. I never took their perspective on any of that. And the things that I can remember saying to parents, I shudder back. And even though I had that ABA background, um, so Leanne, you're getting into some training now for BCBAs on how to train parents, right? Yes. So within the last year, I've started the Parenting with ABA Continuing Education Membership. That's a really long word, but um, I wish I had a cuter title. But what we do is every month, just a specific topic on working with parents. And so empathy and connection, we read popular parenting books to see what are they hearing? What are they listening to? How is it worded in ways that aren't scientific? Um, This month, we talked about alternatives to escape extinction, but not just that, but how do we get the social validity and the parental buy-in? What are parent preferences? And I know some of... um, Several of our members who don't have kids have said it's been helpful for them for exactly that reason. And I have some memories of my own parent training, you know, way back in the day that was horrible that I asked them to do 400 things when I should have asked them to do one thing. Um, And Mm -hmm. so through this continuing education, I'm hoping to help save people from the mistakes that I made. Mm -hmm. There's such a need for that. And I mean, you you kind of only, I don't know if you only recognize this need once you had your own kids or when you were working in the field, did you even notice that there was a need for this kind of parent training or like, what is that? And and maybe that's the problem. Um, Or is there another gap that like you're trying to fill here? I honestly did not realize when I was working and especially I didn't do in-home therapy. Um, when I was doing like full-time center based. So that might be different for people. Maybe you are more aware of things than I was um, working center based, but I didn't see it as such a need until I became a mom myself. And really in having the website and writing my books, which is kind of where I started, I was wanting to reach all moms, not parents specifically of kids with autism and spectrum disorders or people in ABA therapy. Now that's who most of the people now who come to me know a little bit about ABA or they might have higher needs. Um, but my goal still is to just say any parent can use this. And so that's what, you know, all my Instagram and Facebook and all that kind of stuff, just trying to share ideas and tips are for any parent, even though it's still mostly people who've heard of our field. So they probably have some connection to the autism world. So I, I have three kids. They're a little bit older now. They're probably older than your kids. Mm -hmm. Um, I confess that I don't really, you know, let work and home mix where I don't, don't really do ABA my kids. Um, how do you feel like you are a mom with like, do you treat your kids like your clients or how does your ABA background affect your parenting? When my kids were littler, they're five and seven now, so they're still little. When they were littler, we would do more things like token economies, sticker charts, puff ball jars, these sorts of things, Um, sticker chart on my phone app kind of stuff. We don't really do that very often now, but it is, everyone remembers it. And so when we are having a hard spill and that in the last year has been at the end of any sort of school breaks, so like the end of last Christmas break, Thanksgiving break, summer break, spring break, any, we get to the end of that and we're starting transition back into school. The wheels fall off every time, just chaos. Everybody's, you know, has attitude problems. And the first one of last school year, I think it was my husband who was like, maybe we need a sticker chart today. And within, you know, 30 minutes, totally turned our day around. So we needed it for like a very short, quick burst, um, you know, earn however many stickers, and then we can play video games, Mm -hmm. which on the weekends, my kids are allowed to play video games. They would have gotten it anyway. But that day we made it, let's shift this to building up the good behavior instead of just constantly being like, stop whining, stop fussing, stop hitting, stop, stop, stop. Mm -hmm. You know, the next break comes around. It was probably spring break. And it was my oldest daughter who was like, we need a sticker chart today. (laughs) And every time it's been not me (laughs) to say, we need to turn things around. Like this isn't working. It's been the rest of my family. Who's like, I think we need a sticker (laughs) chart today. It's kind of rewarding that we need to shift to building up the positive. So we, we use that sometimes these days. It's more of, um, 
things like we have visual schedules for a morning routine, just trying to build independence, not super structured, like check them off every day and then you earn your whatever. It's just little supports like that. Yeah. I feel like once you have the tools and the strategies, like I, I think I had a similar, you know, I wrote a blog post about how I don't use reinforcement in my house, but like I have those tools, I've done it. I've tried it. I have the strategies. I have the understanding. So I don't feel like it's necessary hundred percent of the time. I think one of my biggest successes was for me, like they become more work than anything. Cause I, I get it. It's as a parent, it's very hard to follow through, but my daughter wants decided to make her own, to, you know, sticker chart or like token board. And she wanted to earn something and she created, you know, the, the framework. And I was like, you know what? I'll go with it. Like if, if you're initiating it, like, great. But sure. You also say that, you know, I don't use ABA in my home, et cetera, et cetera. I've seen you do things like first bends and, well, yeah, you know, like those that you do use the principles of ABA. And I think I do too, but because we're in it for so much, sometimes I don't think we don't even recognize that we're doing it anymore. And my husband will catch me using behavior specific praise and he'll say, really, was that really good remembering? <laughs> and he'll say something like, yeah, that was great remembering. And he's like, oh. it was good remembering. yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a sticker? <laughs> One thing I do a lot right now is I'm always talking about on all the different media channels um, to fill their bucket first, which is non-contingent reinforcement. I love that. Or, and so even like right now, my daughter is home right now with me um, as we're recording this and we just played Monopoly because I was like, okay, mom has a meeting at this time. And so we're going to play a game first and then we'll I'll have my meeting and you'll play by yourself for a while. And so that's like an ABA tool. I'm doing ABA, but really it's just making sure that I am filling her bucket first so that I know she's probably not going to interrupt us, you know, no promises um, because she got what she needed and she loves to play board games. So that's our easy bucket mm-hmm. filler around here. Was, I think one of the best uh, advice I was ever given, um, I think again, before I was a BCBA was that concept of just spend quality time every single day with your children alone. Like my kids are very young, are very close in age. Um, and I would have designated time that they got alone time. Um, and at the time I didn't even realize it was an ABA principle, but yeah, tying that into that non-contingent reinforcement. Um, I love the way you, you, that's a technical term, but just calling it filling their bucket. Um, it really does work, um, for our kids. It's one of the things that I usually talk to parents about if their kids are acting up for attention, um, for a lot of those things is teaching parents how to have that relationship. It's pairing. It's all of those principles that we learn, um, in parenting, it really applies. And, and labeling it for them. Yes. Oh, sorry. It for them using parent friendly language. So, like, you know, back in our early days of parent training, I would have called it non contingent reinforcement and I would have sounded really smart, but that's not helpful, you know? So, finding these better words, like, yes, you're pairing yourself with reinforcement, but you're just building a connection with your kids. So, here's a fancy word, but here's how we talk about it. So, you can understand it better. You know, you're just filling their bucket. You are doing all these ABA principles, but let's talk about it in a way that makes sense. And we're not just sounding smart <laughs> talking. <here. laughs> Absolutely. Um, and that, and, you know, labeling it for the kids as well. So, you know, parents may spend a ton of time with their kids and maybe a ton of, you know, alone time or one-to-one time, but if it's not labeled for the kids, the kids might just take it for granted or not know. So, so just calling it, hey, mommy daughter time, or you know, daddy, daddy daughter time, or what have you, and labeling it. And I found that really helps as well. Like, you know what? I'm I'm really busy right now, but at three o'clock, your child understands time. If not, you know, right after lunch, we're going to do blah, blah, blah. And it's gonna be mommy daughter time. Let's do this. Yes. I mm-hmm. yeah, I always tell parents that too and make a big deal of the, like, I'm gonna put my phone in the other room and I'm Huge. just focusing on you. Like you're doing those things, but like call it out. Like I am yeah. only playing with you and not your siblings. I am only talking to you and not dad or, you know, mm-hmm. make a big deal. Yeah. Out of it. Yeah. Easier said than done though, but I hear you. Um, <laughs> uh, so what is, what is the most common challenge you hear from professionals in terms of why parent training is so hard or why it's not being done or what they're finding difficult? The biggest complaint is follow through that, you know, I go in and I train a parent and I leave them some homework, some steps to follow, and then nothing gets done. 
And so we looked at some research in our continuing education group a couple, two months ago, last month, um, about treatment adherence, which is another big fancy word, but it just means follow through. Are they adhering? Are they sticking to the plan and kind of what those barriers are. And the biggest takeaway that our group came up with and, and people have been using is, you know, assessing those barriers with the parents ahead of time, assessing it throughout And it doesn't have to be big and fancy. And we don't have to use the word barriers because that can be a little offensive of, you know, why is this a barrier to you doing what you're supposed to do, mom and dad, but instead saying, okay, is this going to work for your family time? Do you have the time to do these steps that I'm asking you to do? Um, Is it too much effort? Does it take into consideration the whole family, siblings, extra people who are in the home, um, I'm going to have to think of all of them. Community was one that came up in the research too. Will your extended community support you? Or are they going to, you know, criticize you for what you're working on? And so what we, um, all of us in the group really appreciated just a little handout. And I can share that with your um, behavior resource members too, if they're interested. Oh, that would be amazing. Just a little handout that gives them the way to tell you that they're unhappy. So instead of just like a yes or no, or like a Likert scale, it's like time yes, I have time to do this. I don't know, maybe, or no, I really don't have the time for this because a lot of times when we work with parents, we're like, well, what do you think? And they're like, it's fine. (laughs) Or do you understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not super comfortable coming to you as the expert who's come into their home or working with them clinically to say, no, I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. A lot of them will say yes. And like, they'll try, but they don't have the time like mornings, we can't do 14 steps in the mornings, but they can't tell you that necessarily in that moment for whatever reason, their own learning history with mental health professionals or medical professionals or whomever teachers that they've worked with, they're not comfortable looking at you, BCBA, who's here and saying, you know, that sounds kind of hard. I think it was Sasha Long who made the words. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was Sasha Long who made the analogy of the mechanic. And, you know, when you bring your car to the mechanic, and the mechanic says, okay, this is what's wrong with your car, this, 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 and this. And you, you just nod and smile and go, okay. Um, and I sometimes think that that's, you know, us, you know, ABA professionals walking into a family home and we're saying, do this, do this and do this. And, you know, they're nodding and agreeing very similar to the way I nod and agree with the mechanic going, oh yeah, yeah, it must be that. <laughs> I yeah. don't know what you're talking about. Yes. Or when they're like, well, you do, you know, get your oil changed more often. You're like, yes. And then I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it's, it's the same <laughs> or like, when the dentist tells you to flash your teeth all the time. Yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yes. And you're just like, mm-hmm, it's fine. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> and no. And so giving parents those words to tell us what's wrong um, and what might be wrong. Cause even the parents are overwhelmed. So you give them, you know, what you think is a super simple one step behavior plan and they can't do it. They might not be able to figure out why, why didn't you do that in the last week? And they're like, I don't know, there's too much going on. So instead let's, was it the time? Was it the effort? Was it too much stuff? Was it because the other siblings weren't included in the behavior plan? And um, I have six kids and I can't just work with one one one-on-one, whatever it may be, trying to find those barriers. I love discussing that ahead of time with parents too. I love that idea um, because not only when you're discussing the barriers, but it sounds like you're also pairing a little bit and establishing a relationship with the parents. You're trying to have some empathy, right? And see what they're dealing with. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I just love how you are so good at like simplifying these concepts and putting them into like everyday language. And I think that's probably what people love to hear from you. Um, And it's not to say that like you have all the knowledge, like you definitely know the technical terms that you're very well versed, Um, but it's, it's, it is refreshing to like, you know, hear it be simplified so well. Um, And I know that like, you know, we have a lot of people who could benefit from hearing that. Um, so thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> For years, um, I considered doing continuing education. I looked at doing it in other ways. And I was like, but no, I spend all my time bringing it down. <laughs> like, I have a hard time <laughs> going back up to the research. So it's been fun through our continuing education group. And like you said um, about doing it before, we actually just looked at social validity um, yesterday. So this is fresh on my mind, but looking at the research on social validity, this is totally off topic, but it's interesting in, um, Java and other ABA research journals, like there's very little social validity being recorded, reported, but the big thing is that social validity was initially created and intended by our 
you know, ABA founding fathers um, to happen before. Mm-hmm. And I find that usually in your reading articles or something, social validity is an afterthought where you say, well, did you like what we did? Mm-hmm. But if you go back to the original, it's intended as a before you start a program to figure out what is going to be rejected by it. And so it's actually described by Bayer as a defensive technique. So like fix the problem before it happens. Um, so like you're saying, it's really interesting years before that's where social validity is supposed to be happening before at the beginning. Is there any one of those, you know, barriers that you find to be most common for parents? I'm effort and time. Hmm. They kind of go hand in hand. Makes uh, sense. How can we resolve that? It's usually the biggest. <clears throat> you solve that. Um, it depends on your relationship with the parents. So if you're working with somebody one-on-one, hopefully like in a parent training, I would get out their schedule, create the time for them. So for, you know, some moms, it might be, well, if your kids are at school during the day, if you have time at home, if they're not working outside of the home or something, why aren't you prepping dinner at 1 PM instead of at 5 PM? You could chop all of those vegetables. You could have everything measured. You could even cook the meal while the kids are at school. And so then when they're at home, you could find that five minutes of one-on-one time per kid or something like that. Like I get into their personal (laughs) information and if they'll let you again with the relationship, but in getting creative and finding the time. And that's not even like behavior analytic. That's just, you know, helping someone figure things out at one of the other good advice that I was given that was make your kids lunches the night before, like set yourself up for success. There's no reason at 7 AM to be making sandwiches. And because I've done that, like my entire kid's childhood, I can't even imagine why someone would make lunches in the morning. It like boggles my mind. So it's like, it's such a part of like what I do, but it was just a simple thing. It's not rocket science. Like it's just, you know, finding those simple solutions. And these are environmental manipulations. These are ABA tools that you are sharing with them. If you're, you know, needing to justify it to insurance or whomever, um, you are working on setting their environment up for success, whatever that may look like um, and helping them find the time, but making sure we also aren't giving them a 14 step plan for after you leave, you know, that if time is the issue, well, okay, I asked you to spend 20 minutes a day working on this. Let's, let's scale that back down to five. And then hopefully we can use shaping to make that a little bit longer and a little bit longer until hopefully we'll get to 20. But if the mom's not, or dad is not motivated to go for 20, we need to step back a little bit, just like we would with a kid with shaping. I'm always talking about parent coaching, like doing ABA on parents as well. And it's so true because number one, you have to develop a relationship, AKA pair yourself with reinforcement, right? And then, like you said, you know, looking at environmental manipulations and that type of thing, but also just, you know, getting in there and looking at their schedules and, you know, kids and looking at what their reinforcements are and looking at what's doable for them, the baseline, and then shaping that behavior and chaining in more and more steps. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. And that's what I'm always saying in our continuing education group too. Like you do this with kids every day, (laughs) you do these exact things. So now do it for the grownups too. Why is that so hard for us? It's hard for all of us. Yeah. (laughs) It's universal. When I was younger, I used to be a ski instructor and I was probably, I don't know, 18 and I taught little kids. So an 18 year old going in and teaching three and four year olds how to ski, it was really fun. Um, But then I got an adult class and I said, well, what do I do with adult beginner skiers? And they said, Shana, you teach beginner skiers all the time. And I said, yeah, but there's three. I do like tall as a house and small as a mouse. They said, do it with adults. I said, really? Are you kidding me? And I did it. And it was my most successful class. The adults thought it was hilarious that I was treating them. No, I wasn't treating them like kids, but I was doing some of the same exercises. They thought it was hilarious. Um, And and it was effective, right? And it, you know, Mm -hmm. it's the same principles, you know, you still have to be, you know, do you ski the same way as you do when you're starting out? So same type of thing with parents, right? You're, you still have to do this and you can't, start big and go small. It's the other way around for sure. And we forget that we just, do um, it. yeah, definitely. It's a good reminder. So we have a lot of people listening, people in our community who are newly minted BCBAs, you know, just passed the exam, starting out in the field. Um, what do you think you would have liked to hear? What's your best advice that you would give some, someone who's just starting out? 
I think specific to parent training, um, since that's my, my thing, <laughs> just to remember that you are the expert on behavior, but they are the expert on their family. You are not a parent. I'm not a parenting expert. We are experts on behavior, but be ready for them to bring their expertise on their kid and on their family. And that's how you're going to have more success as a team and not as you, the expert going in and dictating how things are going to go. That's huge. That's some great advice. Yeah. Um, where could people find out more about you? Parenting with ABA.org. So on there, you'll find um, resources for parents and resources for professionals. So there's a couple different tabs for parents to get more support, more um, online courses, coaching, blog posts, and then for professionals, um, our continuing education group and some downloads and things. Amazing. You're on social media too. Yes. Instagram and Facebook, both parenting with ABA. Guys, check out her reels. They're amazing. They're amazing. <laughs> Leanne, you're amazing. I, I love you. <laughs> that you put everything into really practical, doable things and terms and activities. I love it. Yes. It was so nice to catch up with you. And you're really, you know, doing amazing things for parents, for professionals. And we're so excited to see where, where it goes. So let's uh, stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining today's conversation. Wherever you get your podcast, please go and subscribe, rate and review so others can find out about us too. For more from How to ABA, including free resources and ABA materials, visit our blog at howtoaba.com and make sure that you're following us on social media for more practical tips and updates.